delivering the state of San Diego every week, John Dady. And John. Good morning. 1.457 million people to the San Diego County Fair. This thing, a lot of bodies. It just continues to grow in size, my man. That, that's, you know, and again, you, you, you and I talk about politics. People forget that the board is a politically appointed board that runs the fairground and everything from the races to the fairs. So I'd like to give kudos to what a great job they're doing. Yeah, not only the board, but then the people that, uh, that uh, assign them those positions as well, right? Oh, absolutely. That reflects well all the way up the ladder. So, uh, John, we had uh, Marshmallow Wars in OB, and they, they were saying, make s'mores, not wars. And it sounds like that went over very well this year as the number of marshmallows found in the streets uh, declined to almost zero. Yeah, you know, what the, really the problem was, as we saw similar to the alcohol on the beach, et cetera, it wasn't the, the use, it was the abuse that was happening. I mean, when you heard stories last year of literally of people putting batteries on marshmallows, I mean, that, that was literally, uh, that had already surpassed the point of being ridiculous. So I, I think it's good that voluntarily a lot of, that it was cut back a lot of uh, this year, and the people who did participate did it reasonably. Well, and once again, you talk about the, the different leaders, the town council there, their, their push sure seem to have an effect on this uh, issue of theirs. Absolutely. Again, give kudos to again. This is where leadership is stepping up to the plate. Now, John, over the weekend, I had a number of people that uh, uh, they they disagree, they agree or they disagree on immigration. And uh, one thing about being a radio host is that um, uh, you are loved and hated all at the same time by both sides of the aisle. Uh, but uh, I was uh, was accused of being a terrorist over the weekend. Now, that's interesting because I was reading my my subscription to Al Jazeera, uh, which is one of my favorite publications. And uh, interestingly enough, all of a sudden, a story pops up about Carl DeMaio. What is this about? It, it was phenomenal. Dur during the Filner escapade, uh, I was giving a lot of interviews to, you know, all our local stations, Channel 8, KUSI, et cetera. And one reporter says, John, let me introduce you to a new reporter. She doesn't know you. Would you mind talking to her? So I gave an interview on the air, and afterwards they said, you know, what station was she? said, Al Jazeera America. So they are clearly, you know, boosting up their, their American coverage, and all of a sudden they're focusing in on one of our big congressional races. Yeah, they sure are. Now, it's Carl DeMaio, and they focus in not only on DeMaio, the congressional race itself, but uh, also his relationship to the LGBT community, and uh, what what are the what, is this going to be a problem for Demio? Are are is the gay community going to be a problem for the gay candidate? Oh, I, I don't think so. I think uh, the DeMaio campaign has worked this uh, perfectly. They've uh, used it to their benefit uh, without having too many detractors. And again, you know, the famous quote, as you quite well know, uh, is all politics is local. In that congressional district, the fact of being a gay candidate is really not an issue. Is there uh, one side or the other that wants to make it an issue? Does it benefit well, either side? Uh, Certainly. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure one side would like to exploit the so-called, you know, ultra-conservative element in that district that's not going to vote for a gay candidate, no matter who it is. But I, I think, and again, for that district and for this particular candidate, you're going to see that minimal because Carl has his main, you know, uh, portfolio is fiscal conservative and whether or not you're close to the gay community, that you, that's going to appeal to any Republican. So I, I see it as a very minimal issue, if an issue at all. Yeah, it seems to me that the left isn't going to want to attack this issue because it's it's going to, it, it's only going to serve to backfire on them, is it not? Well, absolutely. And again, his opponent, the incumbent uh, Democrat Scott Peters, you know, has close ties to the gay community. So that that's another reason why it's a non-issue. Yeah, so we'll we'll keep an eye on this. And you talked about those those ultra conservatives in that fifty second congressional district that will never vote for a gay candidate. Uh, do you see them voting for a gay candidate or a Democrat first? Well, let, let me let me qualify by saying I think the uh, if that is a category, I think is very small or minimal if sure. it exists at all in that congressional district. But if anybody is of that stripe, I see them sitting on their hands and not voting. I, I'm trying to think back to my grandfathers, who, of course, fit the bill of that ultra conservative mold. And, well, I, I just don't see them ever voting for somebody from the other side of the aisle. I think that they're so rigid and so entrenched in that in the Republican Party itself, not even necessarily the ideology that the Republican Party claims to claims to hold. But they're so entrenched in the party itself. I just don't see them ever throwing a vote to the other side. And I also don't see them not voting because I'm afraid that they would look at that as giving the other side at least half a vote. 
But again, I want to emphasize in many other congressional districts, that might be a factor. I don't see it as a factor in this district. Now, keep in mind, roughly, and I'm using round numbers here, roughly the registration in that district is roughly one third Republican, one third Democrat, one third declined to state. So literally both candidates are without a doubt securing their base, but they to actually win, they're going to have to make a huge inroads in the, to that to decline to state uh, base. So that's really where the battle is. This issue, Chris, I just don't see it as, as an issue in this particular congressional district. What does that say about the social advancement of our of our society that it's not an issue? Well, I think it says a lot about. I mean, San Diego has always been that way. I mean, yeah. obviously, after the Filner debacle, we had uh, the interim mayor was a, was a uh, of the gay community. Um, we we have several, uh, uh, you know, so many members uh, that are in big positions here. The chairman of the airport authority, uh, the speaker, of the assembly is from San Diego, and member of the gay community. So it's it, it just I think San Diego has always been uh, the leader in this field uh, throughout the country. Yeah, and I wonder if we were to take DeMaio and have him run in a congressional district in a different state if all of a sudden it would become a bigger issue than it is here in San Diego because we are, uh, I would say, we're far, far advanced socially as for, in regards to that anyway. Oh, that, that, with, without a doubt, I think that's an understatement. Yeah. Nothing against, I don't want to name any state, but, you know, we probably will be in race in the state of Montana. Right, that's exactly right. John, thanks so much for your time. John Dadian from Dating and Associates. A pleasure having you on this, with this week's State of San Diego, John. Thanks. Take care. All right, take care. At uh, 6.30.